Hello everyone and welcome! Uh, it's the Euro V8 uh, supercar series presented by Racetech. Uh, we are live for the Season 8 Racetech Cup round here, the first super sprint round of the season live from beautiful uh, Barber short layout A for the first super sprint of the season. My name is Marco Barbanera, no Sam Fitzpatrick tonight unfortunately, but, but we will be joined uh, uh, by a special guest later uh, down the line and what a great season this has been already with several surprises some great rounds in uh, Suzuka of course uh, the first one then we had a great round uh, uh, sorry the first one in Monza then we had a great round in Suzuka the Enduro at the North Life and now like I said time for the first super sprint of the season and the drivers have answered in big numbers uh, as per usual for this one for some of them it's the first super sprint of uh, of their Euro V8 career so they, they don't know what they are in store for what are we in store for well if this is your first time around here first of all big big thanks to everyone who joined us and started following our channel in the last couple of minutes where we were going through the pre-roll hopefully you enjoy the show Three 15 minute races uh, will be held tonight. After each race, we will have a random reverse grid uh, that will determine the order for race two and three. Race one is being determined by qualifying, and as you can see, qualifying is basically almost over with apparently Chris Jackson bringing on pole position for this one, unless we have some very, very late surprises. Jimmy McKnight never quit racing. Uh, so far locking out the first three positions of uh, the field here in this very short version of a Barber Motorsports Park and that should be the case unless Nicole Foggy has some answer of course Foggy back in uh, contention after uh, taking uh, basically the season off last year uh, after winning the title two seasons ago uh, so he had a very nice start of the championship uh, yeah. same goes for George McClay same cannot be said for his teammate for Foggy's teammate Johnny Brandon who's sitting right now in fourth position as you can see the drivers are adding for their pistols ready to go racing for race one out of three it is mandatory that you stay on the lead lap to stay eligible for the reverse grid uh, and uh, it's not easy, it's not easy, drivers will have a fast repair, but it's a very short lap, as you can see, uh, as you have, have maybe got a glimpse of it on the on the track map just a few uh, seconds ago, but let's go with the starting grid then, for race one of the night, and it's Chris Jackson and uh, teammate Tony Klusterman around, running up the first two position then, Another never quit guy in uh, Jimmy McKnight in the third place. The first of the XVR cars is Johnny Brandon, Greg Carr, who is uh, absolutely by far the best gentleman in the championship so far in fifth. Nicole Foggy, sixth, and McClay, championship contender, together with Jake Blackall of CQR Club, Ara Stadler, and Joshua Chin. Then two XVR cars in Richard Warmingham and Steve Lavelli, then Sam Buz in Ken Ali Burton, Marco Murmela, Peter Bingham. Yaroslav Sebula, Dominic Suare from Isia Racing, then Wayne Sanderson, the Team Chimera car of Jamie Wilson, Tyler Newitt, uh, Nikolai Bogatayrev, uh, Stefan Schlacker, and Michael Frost. Then we have Matthew Bann, Anthony Woodward, Jeffrey Collinson, Andrew Hoffman. And rounding up the grid for Vulcan Esports RHT and LHT, which I suppose stands for uh, right and right and left and drive, uh, maybe, Clyde Whiting and Bill Switzer, uh, so getting ready to go racing here in this fantastic, fantastic racetrack. New challenge for many of these drivers, uh, I would imagine. A track that is not very regularly visited by uh, many series, especially as we say hello to Kaylin. Hello, Kaylin. Nice to have you here on board uh, for uh, for this one and just waiting for the start of the race then the never quit racing boys you can 
catch their new livery of course very striking and we are racing uh, from Barber getting the third one always tricky as they head into this uh, breaking area not a long run and around goes Nicole Foggy the championship contender and he's not the only one unfortunately massive 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 file up several cars are involved the Bogatire, the Soare, Buzin, uh, Peter Bingham I think also involved Hoffman, Lavelli and Whiting trying to make their way through the carnage but it's Chris Jackson uh, who leads the way in front of Klusterman and Johnny Brandon maybe for once uh, got a lucky break and avoided the mess at the start of the race uh, as he heads behind uh, uh, the two uh, NQR teammates, Jamie McKnight sitting in fourth, lost one spot, then Carr in fifth. Let's see how this pans out. There will not be probably uh, a lot of time to go and catch the replay of that. As you can see, McClay going for the move on Carr. Carr comfortably in the lead of the club championship race. His closest contender, just to give you an idea, is Michael Frost. He's in P18, so certainly looking good for him, but back at the front. Will these two guys fight Chris Jackson and Tony Klusterman? Uh, Jackson seemed to have adapted pretty well to the new cars, whilst uh, Tony, two-time champion, uh, of a waiting period, as you can see, they go straight to the right here instead of turning left as they would do at the normal race. Let's run on board with the NQR blue car and basically they cut straight through the final portion of the uh, main race track uh, of course known for uh, racing in the IndyCar Championship among others and back to the starfish track very very short lap around here and already we are in our third auto box comes up as Jackson gets the fastest lap of the race at the same time Still very close, McClay championship leader tries to get uh, ahead of Carr, but no dice, as at the same time Marco Nurmella, one of the debutants, is uh, trying to get around uh, Richard Worthingham under the XVR boys. Nurmella is uh, certainly, certainly uh, having a great start to the championship. Ali Burton, his teammate, is waiting in the wings, as is Joshua Chin. And around uh, goes the Finnish driver, unfortunately. Well, that was one jinx and a half, unfortunately. So Marco goes around, they will have it all to do. Still, uh, of course, uh, very, very new to the car, very new to the championship. Needs to get some records of I'm sure he's going to be competing for podium in a very, very short time period as we go once again back on the start-finish line already in the fourth lap. Already three minutes into the race as McClay goes a bit wide. This will give cars some breathing room. So far there are four never quit racing cars in the top five. Let's see where Nicole Foggy is. Nicole Foggy is sitting in 26th place. Gap to the leader is 39 seconds. Again, important, massively important to stay on the lead lap if you want to be eligible for the reverse as we have Chin. Uh, and Ali Burton going wide. Chimera versus uh, Racecraft as they were heading for the airpin. Little bit of a nudge there from Chin. Then had to wait and waited, I say, very gentlemanly. To let his rival pass as Nurmela now. Trying to get past Newit, and so he does comeback trail whilst uh, Chris Jackson another purple lap there is really pushing at 56.62 pulling away from Tony and I think Tony now will have to look back and uh, maybe worry about Johnny Brandon a bit let's jump on board with uh, Le Champion stayed faithful to the blue oval after the new cars were introduced and the switch to Ford was the key for him to taking uh, two out of the last three championships in this category. His teammate, uh, of course, Nicole Foggy went back to driving the Olden.
Battle Scars on Steve Lavelli's car and not only on his car, I think also on the right side of uh, Dominic Suarez's car you can see there are there's plenty of paint that's been scraped off this car still not having a new damage model one day, hopefully one day since they have been uh, developed fairly recently as uh, Jimmy Wilson of Chimera goes in very deep a little bit of a shoulder barge and he goes past uh, the ISEA racing uh, driver Dominic Suarez nice job, pretty nice move purely in the st spirit of this car I'd say Five point five ninety eight still pulling away is Chris Jackson. McClay is desperately trying to get past the car. Not easy to go um, and make moves, of course, because I think the best passing spot of the of this racetrack would be uh, the hairpin. But in this configuration, it is not uh, really uh, an hairpin anymore. You have to go left and right. So it, it really breaks apart uh, what is, uh, I think, the hardest breaking zone of the of the original layout. The running to the first corner is not long enough, in my opinion, to make it uh, worth uh, the risk. I mean, you can, but you need a perfect exit from around here and uh, not uh, at all uh, uh, the slips in effect, not at all strong enough in these cars to warrant. Uh, possibility as you can see of a dive into the turn one as now it's Usterman's time to get the uh, fastest lap of the race 55.53 still 1.2 seconds back but he gained a couple of tenths over Chris Jackson in this lap Mela and Schlacher side by side for 14th place for Mela Again, after his mistake earlier, trying to make up some positions as we are already halfway through this race. Oh, and we have a collision at the back. It's Wilson Whiting involved. get through the replay very very quickly they went three wide into the airpin that's not an airpin they cannon off each other so they were whiting wilson and i think one of the oh and woodward another one of the ntr uh, uh, cars it's very tricky uh, it's tricky enough when it's an airpin you know and you have to do only turn left but when you have to turn left and the right i think uh, three wide is not the way to go into that corner. Meanwhile, good answer from our race leader in this lap. The gap now up to 1.6 seconds as he starts his 10th lap of the race. And I have to say, Klusterman has been able to shrug off the pressure from uh, Johnny Brandon in uh, in third place. McKnight still in uh, I would say no man's land, but very happily sitting in fourth. Of course, he would love to have uh, a clean sweep of the podium uh, for his team. As Ali Burton is trying to get past uh, CQR very own Matt Ban. The man behind World GT, among others, on Mondays on the iRacing Esports Network, broadcast by Apex Racing TV, so you don't want to miss that. Big change that for the series, of course, they were all employing GT cars, GT3 cars this season for a World GT, and now they have to continue with the new tire model that these drivers have been using, well, since the beginning of this season. We have seen that in this championship, uh, uh, of course, we have also to consider that we have new cars as well, but it seems like the packing order didn't really change that much as expected. But at the same time, give the opportunity to some, uh, for some drivers to get maybe that little bit of extra 
uh, speed, they needed the extra confidence. I'm of course looking at you, Grakar, who really blossomed into a regular top five contender and maybe podium contender uh, this early in uh, in season eight. And again, don't want to jinx him, but he looks like he's going to be. Uh, running away with that club championship that you can uh, recognize the club drivers think of this as a gentleman championship with that yellow uh, sorry the white stripe on the on the car and the white stripe also in the timing tower on the left side of your screen Anthony Woodward had uh, to head for the pizza something nasty must have happened uh, to the NQR driver and there it is hard into the wall hopefully everyone avoided him no that was not the case just couldn't catch the that, that car there but I think uh, maybe it was one of these here cars uh, or maybe uh, it's going to be tough to, to get to the back of that but uh, certainly there will be a very wounded car there with it was a straight hit to the front Oh, the Klusterman fan club is in the house Well Tony, of course, a legend of the championship The first ever And so far only back-to-back -back title winner In the history of this championship Of course, Johnny Brandon has got two titles to his name But in three seasons Glad to have uh, you Glad to have... Uh, Some uh, great Canadian fans in the chat, or of the Canadian driver, you uh, can hear some uh, hopeful noises uh, in the far distance. Which means that our very special guest is about to jump in with us as Greg Carr and George McClay are uh, slugging it out uh, side by side, entering uh, the last corner or the second to last corner. A little bit of a shoulder barger from the Texan fifth time motorsport driver but it seems like it is going to do the trick but now we will have to contend with staying on the outside for turn one which then will turn uh, into the inside for turn two and I think that could have the lead after all and yes the championship leader then jumps into fifth position great move from George McClay Holding the tech sense it's time motorsport flag high. Team Metara Sadler just behind in seventh place. So good race overall for uh, the team. Considering that they were not very quick in qualifying, I mean they were there in qualifying, but uh, it's uh, certainly been uh, an, an NQR uh, lockout of most of the good positions in that front row. Other lap goes in the books, identical lap times there at the front for the two leaders, Brandon and McKnight are slightly slower. Then it's McClay, Carr, Stadler, Warningham, Sebula. We haven't talked about him, so let's talk about him. And having a quietly a very nice race. Finish into the top 10 if he can hold this position a bit of damage, but I don't think he will, he will care too much on his car. And another good performance. Is the one from uh, Wayne Sanderson from Australia he is uh, holding on to the top 10 in front of Ken Burton who just gets passed by Joshua Chin just as we were uh, switching away let's see from the chopper and a mistake there from uh, the racecraft uh, esports driver and Shin doesn't need a second invitation as we are heading into the final lap of the race, probably, possibly, who knows. It's going to be a very, very close call uh, considering that a lap around here is more or less 56 seconds. More of our regular viewers jumping into the chat to follow the action. Of course, there's two more after this, so don't go away. Race 2 and race 3, and usually race 1 is the civil one, then the reverse grids will come into effect. Uh, but already we had a massive, massive pileup into the first corner of the first lap. Moment of truth for Chris Jackson. Will that checkered flag appear 
on the top left of the screen or will he have to go for another lap? He will have to go for another lap. And here we go then. White flag, Sarah LaBlanca is uh, Marco Murmela, Matt Ban, Kane Ali Burton all in a fight here. Murmela up to P13. So as you can see, his mistake is able to come back from it, but not back to the position he was. And he made his mistake fairly early into the race. So it's very tough to pass around here. Mistakes are going to be really, really, really hard to recover from. As George McClay, maybe. With top five in his pocket. Johnny Brandon and Jamie McKnight. McKnight trying to make it. A full NQR podium in the end. Don't think he's going to have enough. As now for, for real, the final corner for Chris Jackson. It's going to be a Canadian 1 2, an NQR 1 2, and Chris Jackson brings home the checkered flag. A uh, very, very, very dominant victory from him. And Tony Krusterman, fantastic second place. Here comes Johnny Brandon defending that podium from Jimmy McKnight and George McClay getting some more valuable points. Greg Carr will win the gentleman race in sixth some more overtakes here oh and Sebula with a mistake but he will finish in p10 sanderson was able to jump him at the very end of the race we'll have to see what happened there as more and more cars come home let's see what happened to the polish driver you can see sanderson is just behind him heading uh, for the final corner nothing major happening here maybe a mistake in the very last corner as it was going uh, slower than expected it's almost like uh, he either let him pass or uh, you know let him go too early but as you can see uh, sorry, the race results are already on your screen right now. Chris Jackson wins the race. Tony Klusterman second in front of Johnny Verdon, Jimmy McKnight and George McClay. Greg Carr, Ara Sadler, Richard Warmingham, Wayne Sanderson and Yaroslav Sebula round up your top 10. Joshua Chin, Kane Aliberto, Marco Nurmela, uh, Matthew Bunch, Stefan Schlacker, Sam Buzin, Tyler Newitt and Steve Lavelli is your top 18 as we go forwards with Michael Frost and Clyde Whiting. These three drivers, Lavelli, Frost and Whiting, are second, third and fourth in the club championship race. Then Nicole Foggy, of course, a big, big trouble for him after that uh, first lap uh, collision. All in 21st, then Jeffrey Collinson, Bogatire, Bingham, all these drivers involved in that mess. Crucially, Bingham is the last car eligible for the reverse grid. Then we have Andrew Hoffman, Bill Switzer, Dominic Suarez, Jamie Wilson, four laps down. And the only driver who I think in the end retired after that collision at the very start is Jake Blackall. So knowing this, knowing everything we do about the race results, I think it is time to bring you the first of two reverse wheels for tonight should be on your screen right now therefore let's roll it twenty six plus four which makes thirty even for a mathematically challenged uh, person like me, therefore, with not that big of a number of cars eligible for the reverse grid, I'd say with certainty that Peter Bingham will start from pole in front of uh, Boca Tyrev, Collinson in third, and great chance for Nicole Foggy in fourth, and Clyde Whiting in fifth. Uh, so that is it for race one. Now, a short commercial break and then race two. And I already see our very, very special guest on the horizon ready to join us. So don't go away. We will be back after this.
back live from Barber Motorsports Park and I lied to you, no special guest uh, for uh, race 2 and race 3 but I have to say Woody tried its best to, to be here, he actually was in the booth with me for uh, half of race 1 and then the racing website decided he didn't, didn't want his money for uh, uh, the, the, the content that he was going to purchase and of course uh, it always works uh, iRacing very happily takes money from us and I happily give them give to them every time and we all do when the new content is released but of course when you need to get it very quickly for a broadcast it doesn't so we still thank uh, Woody for uh, his generosity and trying to be with us and luckily for you you will be stuck with me for uh, the rest of the evening as race 2 is just around the corner with the drivers taking their final steps of practice uh, after an interesting race 1 with uh, uh, NQR getting 1st and 2nd place Chris Jackson in front of his teammate and 2 time champion Tony Krusterman, here is Chris Jackson. And of course, Jackson, uh, Brandon, uh, McClay, they will all start from the back. Nicole Foggy will start towards the front. Let's see how many of the drivers who got uh, uh, a favorable reverse will decide to start uh, from the pits or the ones they hope they will start from the grid because uh, it's a great chance to bring on some valuable points and if you are an experienced driver have uh, some uh, more laps under your belt uh, especially in a chaotic racetrack like this Marco Murbella has got some things to uh, get you know, a little bit more uh, tuned after his mistake in race 1 but hopefully you know, we know he has the talent just missing a little bit of consistency but again he is there and I think he is going to be a force to be reckoned with come the end of the season 10 seconds to the end of this practice session as you can see the chaos drivers trying to get weather has of course uh, been moved now we are in an afternoon setting we were in a morning setting for race 1 then it, it would be afternoon and late afternoon if uh, I got my progression right usually that's what this series has done in the past, uh, very quickly scrolling to the grid because since we don't have qualifying, it is going to be a one minute wait between gridding and racing. Bir Bingham Bogatayrev, your front road, and Collinson Foggy Whiting Frost, uh, Steve Lavelli, Tyler Newitt, uh, then Sam Buzin and uh, Stefan Schlacher in 10th place, then Matthew Bann and Marco Nurmela rounding up the top 12, Ken Ali Burton, Joshua Chin, Jaroslav Cebula, Wayne Sanderson, Rich Warmingham, Arl Stadler in 18th place, then Greg Carr, George McClay, Jamie McKnight, Johnny Brandon, Tony Klusterman, Chris Jackson, and then the drivers who didn't finish on the lead lap in race one for one reason or another, Andrew Hoffman, Bill Switzer, Dominic Suarez, Jamie Wilson, Anthony Woodward, Jake Blackhall, and joining us last mi minute, uh, is Michael Taliancic, hopefully he will take the start, it would be a great surprise to have him on board for this one as the green flag flies straight away and Bingham looking to defend on the outside is Bogatire Foggy goes for the move straight away around goes Whiting and I think also, oh well this is like deja vu all over again George McClay, Jimmy McKnight, Bill Switzer I think Taliancic made it through, but another pile up in the first corner with Foggy already jumping into second place on the inside of the non airpin and straight into the second spot of the podium. There's an XVR car without a rear wing, and Kane Ali Burton is going for a skate in the grass. And the wingless uh, number 77 of Tyler Newitt uh, gets the jump, a little bit of a shoulder barge there. He gets the job done. Arash Sadler with fancy his chances, but Peter Bingham under massive pressure. 
Rom, Nicole Falk gets Collinson in a fight with Ban. Ban gets the move done up into fifth place. How long will Peter Bingham hold the lead as uh, I see Chris Jackson uh, losing some more spots uh, now fighting with the Eva crack car of Andrew Hoffman. Foggy side by side with Bingham for the lead and he will take it very 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 risk free move from himself and Bingham was cautious enough to leave in space. Sebula already some wounds on his car but Foggy makes a big big mistake can he hold it in the lead he can barely barely so even Foggy struggling with the cold tire Staliancic unfortunately got some damage in that collision because he had to go for the pits one of the quickest drivers you will ever find of course he races in the AOSC Super Series on Friday mornings on the eSports Network brought to you by Apex Racing TV uh, and uh, he's more or less a regular fixture around here but unfortunately for him he is uh, stuck down under so not the easiest of time zones for uh, for Michael as Mr. Man warming and you can see this uh, four car battle also involved in Stadler, Schlacker knew it and Sheen as there is some collision and Schlacker goes into the wall very gently you could see that car was never going to be stopped. I mean, the way the grass is right now, especially with the cars on the new tire parameters, aka new tire model V7, really, once you go on that grass, it's like going uh, going uh, for uh, a bit of skating, uh, uh, you know, and uh, you are uh, basically destined for that wall as a jump ball with Boga Tire trying to make stuff happen. Say he's jump ball with Lavelli instead. It makes a bit more sense since the, C the XVR driver is uh, pushing hard and the CQR driver of Matt Van is trying to make a move there, trying to get past him. Uh, this is this could be a very very entertaining scrap for the podium. Did you say hello to Lane O'Connor? La for Poggy 56.612. Quick check on the weather while we have time. You can see 3 in the afternoon. 41 degrees track temperature. Hopefully, these drivers will have a colder one come the end of the race. Bill Switzer with a mistake. Nothing major. Sam Busin with a bigger mistake. And Sam Busin was sporting some severe damage to that car. Oh, and now we have some big trouble live. Multiple cars are involved, including Ara Stadler, Richard Warming, and Jeffrey Collinson. Maybe also Joshua Chin, who was maybe in a separate crash. So Chin went off later. But Collinson, Stadler, and Warming have all made contact. Let's see. Oh! Massive hit between the XVR and the Texans car. And... Poor, poor Jeffrey had nowhere to go. Now three wide for third place. Bogatayev eats Lavelli and Ban profits jumping from fifth to third. Will Lavelli come back at the Russian driver as they had for the quick left right corner as Sebula is also closing the distance of course using all the hard battling between these drivers trying to get a sniff at the podium Bingham still leading the club championship race in second place is Lavelli and in third place in 11th overall is Greg Carr so Lane O'Connor will be racing in race 3 which makes us very very happy a word of wisdom for Lane I don't know if he called the start of race 1 and the start of race 2 Careful on the start of race 3, especially since, you know, he didn't take part in 
in neither of the first two, so we'll have to start from the back. And I strongly suggest a little bit of, uh, let's say, reasoning. As uh, we have this dive uh, from Zebula, loses it, it's uh, Lavelli with his rear end. And they managed to tell the tale, but here comes Joshua Chin. In the meantime, McKnight, oh, 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 Woodward. Uh, Woodward who jumped to the lead thanks to this uh, off. Maybe that part of the track is coded by a racing to be, uh, you know, ahead of the start finish line, but clear, quite clearly is not. Let's see. Oh, a contact between the NQR teammates. Uh, Oh no, that's not what you want to do. It was Jamie McKnight coming into contact with his teammate. And very quickly, more than half of the race has gone by. Poor Tyler knew it, missing his rear wing, dropping like a stone now. It's McClay and McClay's teammate, Le Champion, Johnny Brandon, trying to make the move. Can barely see it, but the big yellow number one on, on his car. He has been very honest with us uh, after the North Life event uh, a couple of weeks back. He lost a lot of points uh, in the beginning of the championship. So he doesn't think he can make it to fight for the title in the end of the season. Already maybe uh, you know, relinquishing his crown. But I know him. He is going to fight for it until the end. And who knows? Other drivers might get into trouble the same way he did. Because that's the nature of... Especially a championship like this where uh, drivers are constantly put through a lot of uh, different challenges. I mean, we are just coming off... Uh, Oh, Clusteron is around! Uh, point in case. The veteran around here, let's see. Hard on the brakes. And then very, very much a lag contact there between... Uh, oh, and now he's blown his engine. That, that has been more contact, I'm sure. has to be more contact for Tony. So he comes back on the track. Up the hill. Oh! And clatters into the 77 of Tyler Newitt. So Newitt a mistake on the curb got collected uh, uh, unwittingly uh, involuntarily sorry by uh, by Kane Ali Burton who um, I don't think had uh, a lot of places to go there just did a small tap from Ali Burton his car was already very unstable and unfortunately Tony Klusterman smacking right into him as we were saying everyone is bound to go into trouble it's the nature of this championship we are coming from a one hour and a half enduro at the North Life. Now the drivers have been thrown uh, this challenge. Three 15 minute races at this very short and chaotic layout here at Barber. And we have the regular double headers with sprint and feature race. Uh, all sorts of uh, track. Long, short, medium. All sorts of races, uh, long, short, and medium. So you never know what might happen as Bogatayrev made a mistake and has unfortunately lost uh, several places uh, one to Joshua Chin and one to Yaroslav Sebula and now one to the ECA driver of Sam Buzin and I think uh, that Car Blackhall uh, are all coming for our four sitter unfortunately for him back at the front of the field Nicole Fogdi not running away as I was expecting, uh, no with respect to Peter, but of course him being in the gentleman championship, so to speak, is um, usually 
his drivers uh, in this reverse grids. Uh, their main objective is, uh, you know, hang in there and don't lose too many positions. As I mean, I need, I need to go back to this fight here because uh, Bogatayev, as per usual, very gentleman driver, doesn't force the issue, but at the same time doesn't give up without a fight. And now, I mean, they are freight training him, and this creates a massive, massive train of cars behind him. Here we go with McClay going past, uh, McClay getting a bit of a hit from uh, Johnny Brandon. Will Brandon go for a switchback move? Uh, well, he would have liked to do that maybe, but Bogatayev was holding the inside, almost working uh, as a roadblock effectively. I think that Johnny could have done much from that position, but you always want to get your moves done when the opportunity presents itself. and. Uh, you know that the traffic jam there was certainly a good 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 chance for him but didn't materialize in the end Nicole Foggy now eight tenths of a second as we are 12 minutes into this race is uh, halfway through his 13th lap of the race traffic in front of him in the figure of uh, Vulcan Esports LHD uh, Bill Switzer Lap 14 starting right now. Going with the uh, Foggy. Again, two of the veteran of the series. up from uh, the lapped car really helping Bingham now Foggy mate makes his way through championship contenders update Josh McClay is in 10th position just behind him is Johnny Brandon Unfortunately, I think that Tony Krusterman is, uh, well, he's still on track, huh? and he's still on the lead lap, crucially, got that faster pair out, so he could be eligible for the reverse, he, should he be able to hold uh, his position on the lead lap? Excellent news for him in what was certainly not uh, a race that he will remember fondly. Nicole Foggy then. Probably we'll have this lap and one more. Pulling away ever so slightly now up to one second. Almost a gap between himself and an excellent, excellent, excellent Peter Bingham who's having one of the best... I mean, he has been around for ages in this championship. And I think that he's having one of the best races I've ever seen. And trust me, I have been around a while with this championship commentated on uh, several seasons now, white flag is in the air, Sala La Blanca for Nicole Foggy, Peter Bingham in second, Matthew Bann in third, Steve Lavelli in fourth, and Jaroslav Sebula trying to hold on to fifth place, but Joshua Chin basically uh, neck and neck with him, the Team Chimera car trying to make uh, here at the airpin, not going to happen. Will he try once again some trouble in the back while we focus on the front of the field? Of course, link to the live timing is in the description. But no one, no one could stop this man. Nicole Foggy, winner of race two for XVR Sim Racing, a fantastic performance from Peter Bingham, grants him a well-deserved podium, Matthew Bann rounds up the top three and in a straight fight to the finish, uh, Jarek Sebula is able to finish fifth behind Steve Lavelli but crucially in front of Joshua Chin, then it's Greg Carr, he made a mistake in the final lap but still holds on to uh, his place in the overall uh, standings and of course second, third, sorry, the gentleman uh, race. Here we go with uh, Suare, just come home, uh, Tony Klusterman uh, trying to gain one more spot uh, against series boss uh, Clyde Whiting. 
on the start finish line. Good exit uh, from uh, Tony, but it is not enough. We have to settle with P25, and that will be a place that does not guarantee, of course, uh, a good reverse grid because uh, who knows the number that we, that might come out in uh, said reverse grid. But of course, before we talk about reverse grids, let's talk about the results. And they should be on your screen right now, hopefully, yes. Nicole Foggy wins uh, by 6 tenths of a second over Peter Bingham, who brings home the club championship race. Matthew Bunny in third, and Steve Lavelli, Joshua Chin in the top 5, Sam Buzing, Ricardo Jake, Blackall, Josh McClay and Johnny Brandon, uh, top 10. Then Nikolai Bogatayrev, Marco Nurmela, Chris Jackson, Wayne Sanderson, Dominic Suare, uh, Rich Wormingham, Stefan Slacher, and Jimmy McKnight, uh, your top 18. Then uh, we have uh, Jeffrey Collinson, Michael Frost. Ara Sadler and Jamie Wilson, Yarek Sebula, Clyde Whiting, and last of the lead lap cars, therefore eligible for the reverse, Tony Klusterman for, Klusterman for NQR uh, in 25th place. And Tyler Newitt, Bill Switzer, Andrew Hoffman, Michael Talianchic, Kena Burton, and Anthony Woodward unfortunately could not score. Uh, a lead lap finish. Hopefully we'll have Michael back for uh, race 2. We know we will have Lane O'Connor for race 3. But before we jump too far ahead of ourselves, we have a reverse grid wheel to roll. And it should be on your screens right now, nicely uh, stopped after uh, the race 1 reverse. Therefore, let's roll it! Twenty four minus three, which makes uh, twenty one. Therefore, starting on pole position, drum roll, please. It's going to be the Texans Fifth Time Motorsports car of Aral Stadler, and he will be joined on the front row by Michael Frost, Jeffrey Collinson, Jimmy McKnight, Stefan Schlacher. So big names missing on the reverse grid. Jimmy Wilson. Uh, Tony Klusterman, of course, uh, will have to work all the way from the back and they will be in good company, of course, because uh, Foggy will join them, of course, uh, uh, Brandon, McClay, Nurmela, Jackson, uh, everyone will be there to keep them company. It's going to be the third and final race of the evening. You don't want to miss that. It will be on this channel, of course, just like the first and the second one after this very short commercial break. Don't go away.
and we are back live, ladies and gentlemen, from Barber Motorsports Park for the third and final race of this super sprint event of the Racetech Euro V8 uh, Championship and of course live here on Apex Racing TV. My name is Marco Barbanera and we are ready to go racing uh, once again after two very eventful uh, races in race one and race two race one winner was chris jackson there is and race two winner was uh, nicole foggy and there is as well getting past one of his xbr teammates uh, one minute left as i said we are in a late afternoon setting here is the weather much colder track we were in the 40s uh, for race two 24 degrees uh, much better especially since these drivers have been complaining uh, i mean rightfully so uh, with the way the car is really really unstable in the first couple of laps maybe a little bit of colder track could help them as the sun is setting over this uh, uh, race track and of course over this race meeting as well we will jump through the starting grid as soon as the session switches over course as we will wrap up this broadcast here uh, don't forget you can jump uh, on another video another stream on our channel to watch the two hours of sebring special event uh, which we you know basically work as a big big uh, dress rehearsal re rehearsal for the uh, for the 12 hour race next week as we usually do here on Apex with the special event uh, following the iRacing special event the week after. So the starting grid for race 3 then and again only one minute to go through it uh, so it gotta be quick. Stadler and Frost then Collinson and McKnight uh, the front two rows then Schlacher, uh, Warmingham, Suare, Sanderson, Chris Jackson, Nurmela Bogatire, then Johnny Brandon, then McClay, Blackhall, Carr, Buzin, Chin and Lavelli, top 18, then Ban and Bingham, Foggy Wilson, Sebula, Whiting, Klusterman, Newitt, Switzer, Hoffman, Taliancic is back, Ali Burton, Woodward, and as promised, Lane O'Connor will round up this field. It's going to be a short run into turn one, but not. A calm one as we have seen everyone is ready and we are and the green flag flies in the air for race three of the evening great start from Stadler as he flies into the lead Michael Frost is in second will we have another pile up well Jackson is going sideways but I think we were lucky this time it was only him now of course uh, is the problem postponed to the next couple of corners we shall see as the cars enter the airpin for the first time and Stadler is still leading the way in front of Frost and McKnight warming up Soiree then Nurmela Brandon Frost uh, is wide very 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 wide sideways in the grass drops a truckload of positions and gives everyone else behind him a bonus overtake as Collinson side by side and now we have a massive hit there in the back into the wall is Taliancic oh and the XVR car of Lavelli gets collected as well Whiting with massive damage and now Hoffman in the wall as well So the chaos that we didn't have in turn one, we had it spread throughout the racetrack and several uh, big names are already, already having uh, to roll back from a long way back. Uh, as we can see, Taliancic uh, basically came back to do race two and race three and uh, let's say he wasn't uh, very, very lucky. It's fair thought for him. He is... Uh, really 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 sacrificing some well-deserved sleep i would imagine after a tough week and sadly being hit left right and center johnny brandon has jumped marco george mcclay sorry i think he did pass him in fact he did not pass him he's about to 
make a move on Mark Murmela. Doesn't want to waste. This is a great chance for him. And he knows that he has to make this move quickly. But as we have seen all night long, easier said than done. As Aro Stedler keeps it in the lead from McKnight and warning a 1.6 second covering the top three. Here we go, Brandon on the inside of the finish driver who slides sideways, goes through the grass, comes back on the track. And in the meantime, you know, you know what? Brandon says, I get another position as Greg Carr is facing the wrong direction. And I think that's Matthew Bann missing important pieces of his car. Let's see what happened. So we see Foggy here going for a move. But the chaos was already happening at the front and Foggy got involved as well. So not a good, uh, good I mean, victory in race one. But apart from that, it's not been the easiest of days. Uh, once again, see, car loses there, it's banned, it's Bogatayev. And then it's a free for all. But we just got a glimpse after passing uh, Nurmela. Uh, Brandon passed uh, Soare very quickly. Nurmela now passes uh, Soare as well. So now Brandon needs to catch his XVR teammate uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Richard Warmingham as. We have a very, very dangerous three wide heading into the airpin. Seems like foggy. Oh, and around goes Collinson. Oh, a massive hit for Sebula. In a cloud of smoke, they start again. As Brandon gets the fastest lap of the race, a 55.89. Is lapping very, very, very quickly. Jackson going past for the fire as they go up the hill and into the airfield now down the hill, of course. Moving uh, towards the inside is Bogatire trying to uh, prevent the move to be completed, but that's not uh, a very easy proposition when Chris Jackson is around getting, uh, you know. He's always there or thereabouts, doesn't win very often. I think he should have more wins than the number he actually has on, uh, on his resume, but uh, he's one of the best and toughest drivers in the championship at Stedler under massive pressure from Jamie McKnight. McKnight who was uh, certainly a bit uh, dejected after race two in the race chat as Blackhall is going very slowly. McKnight with a great chance of bringing home a podium. I think he wants to make this move down quickly because he knows Brandon is coming and of course Stadler and Warmingham are no pushovers. Foggy with a mistake. Championship leader goes wide, drops several places. Now around goes Bogatayrev. Who is not having a good, good day at all. Up on board, warming. Let's see. Dashboard, see. We'll go over 200 kph as uh, McKnight goes for a dive into turn one, more of a, you know, a mere kind of a dive. Slips are not very tight, but McKnight uh, has a fantastic run. Not enough, really. I'm a bit sad because if this track was able to maintain this uh, configuration, uh, but maybe have the chance to have the air pin there would be even better for passing opportunities because, uh, let's be honest, uh, there is not a true passing opportunity unless you can force your way through your opponent on me making a mistake. And McKnight! Uh, said, you know what, I am doing this on my own, and he gets the job done, and looked at behind him, because Brandon has joined the party, got past his teammate Burring, uh, uh, Bingham, Warming, I'm sorry, now he's behind Stedler, so this trio now will try and jostle it out for the win, hopefully Rich can uh, hold, I mean, he, he, he is a curious case, uh, uh, Warmingham, because uh, he was... Uh, 
getting better and better by the race uh, with the old car uh, at the end of last season was really really looking like he could have been uh, uh, possibly a, a podium a regular podium contender and uh, we were talking with Johnny Brandon at the end of uh, the end of uh, the season after the race final the, the season finale last year last season and he said you know uh, Richard is a bit uh, bummed because uh, he was uh, finally getting the hang of this car and now they are going to change it but looks like he hasn't missed a bit at all as you can see Brandon putting his nose on the rear bumper of Stadler who doesn't flinch, doesn't move and so far Stadler is of course fighting for himself in the second place is a great result in a field as tight and as competitive as this but also involuntarily he is playing in favor of Jimmy McKnight the more Brandon is stuck behind him the more of course Jamie will be able to pull away as we have side by side action here between Jackson and Suare with Jackson making the move actually let's get a replay of that at the inside and I have to say that Suarez didn't put much of a fight also slamming on the brakes there now Suarez getting passed by Wilson and McClay exchanging uh, positions uh, Corner after corner, but back to this fight here because here comes Ara Stadler and Johnny Brandon and Brandon with a great move on the outside. Will he be able to complete the pass? He does. Hard on the curves. It makes the trick. 2.1 seconds now to close. As Tony Klusterman, Tony Klusterman is off from P13. went for a dive on the CQR car, lost it to a nice uh, bit of, uh, you know, trip, no, not a trip, he just had to get back into the proper racing. Let's have a look again at that fantastic pass from Johnny Brandon, from the chopper. That was part one, the defense. But still using the outside line, Johnny was able to get the job done. So 2.1 seconds, let's uh, bring up the lap time comparison. Even though, of course, uh, Johnny has been uh, uh, you know, busy making overtakes, so not really, really uh, a fair comparison, I should say. But certainly we can have a better idea. Problem for Brandon, of course, good for McKnight. There is less than 5 minutes left in this race. So in this lap 11, 55.9, Brandon gains 130, 0 0.130. So, I mean, gains, also, but not by much, and also McKnight, fastest sector 3 of the race so far. wide here comes McClay that's a freebie or is it yeah it is another lap in the books let's see lap 12 then for Jamie McKnight it is going to be a 56.06 another tenth and a half not enough not nearly enough for Johnny Brandon but Johnny after a disastrous start to the campaign is really coming on to his own he won't come home with a victory tonight in any of the three races but after a great second place at the North Life and a very consistent round here in Barber I think 
he might look at the rest of the season with a little bit more optimism than, than what he was having uh, just a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month ago. Speaking of XPR, Foggy sitting in 10th. He will get another race victory, of course, out of this meeting, but uh, if he could get past Wilson and Buzin, he would be a very, very happy driver out there and I think he is looking to get past the team Chimera car of uh, Jamie Wilson around the outside he goes it will become the inside of course as they go through the corner and that is a fantastic move from Foggy can Wilson respond from the outside the answer is no great move by the former champion And he's up into ninth. Can he get back to San Buzin? We shall see. Oh, we have a problem for Woodward as he goes wide. Ali Burton, jumping guy on the scurps, is the racecraft sports driver sandwiched between uh, the privateer Stefan Schlacher and uh, Dominique Suarez. Down to 1.5 seconds, but still uh, the gains are in the realm of uh, one, two, maybe three tenths for Brandon. Again, not enough, but I think Brandon will for once uh, try to bring on the points and really try to kickstart his campaign after the great result he had at the North Light with the podium. And, but from now on, of course, it's a it's a you know a matter for Johnny and not only for him, eh, for Brusterman as well, who's uh, sadly not enjoying. Uh, a good uh, good rest of the of, of the meeting after the second place in race one uh, it's a matter of you know try to get as many points on the board as possible and then uh, let's hope for the best at the end of the season final corner of the penultimate lap uh, for Jimmy McKnight uh, La Blanca está en el aire one more lap to go pretty much identical lap times uh, for the two leaders uh, it's just a matter of keeping the car on the black stuff. Here comes Nico Foggy, defending from Wilson, but also attacking Buzin, trying to get another increase in points. This time he goes for the inside on the Sia driver, and it will become the outside. Not easy to pass. Well, Wilson fencing his chances to get past him on the grass. Slightly goes Foggy, and now massively on the grass goes Foggy. Good save, but that is also... Blackhole going past maybe. Yes, Blackhole will have the inside, so Foggy goes to gain one position, he loses two. But back at the front, McKnight. Well, he was not very happy after race two, but as you can see, he's very happy after race three. Congratulations, the second NQR victory of the day. Johnny Brandon with a podium, McClay in third, then we have Stadler, Warmingham. Let's see this fight here, how it ends. Well, Foggy has been, I think, pushed wide. Now he's defending from Klusterman. So Foggy will have to settle with P12 and Klusterman with P13. Other drivers coming on, Kane Ali Burton in 15th. Wayne Sanderson fighting with the wounded Ford of Clyde Whiting. Whiting will get P21. Let's try and see what happened to, to Foggy. Oh, he spun on his own. He was defending from Joshua Chin. And around he went. See, this is where he went wide as we were following uh, his progression. Let's get one place losing two, as I said earlier. Then. Blackhole was able to go past him for good. And you can see behind him there's Joshua Chin, but they don't make any kind of contact. It's just a, a rare mistake. He, he made a first mistake, he saved it, but then I think the tires were a bit dirty, was off the line. And that was all she wrote for him. Fantastic job from Jimmy McKnight. Let's go through your race results for race three of the evening McKnight uh, brings it home 1.1 seconds over Johnny Brandon and George McClay 
in third Ara Steller and Richard Warmingham round up your top five. Then Mark Murmela, good result for him in front of Chris Jackson, Sam Busin, Jamie Wilson, Jake Blackwell, Joshua Chin, Nicole Foggy, Tony, Klusterman, Dominic Suare, Kane, Ali Burton, Stefan Schlacher, Matthew Bann. Winner of the club championship race was Greg Carr, even though in uh, 18th place, but it counts nonetheless. Anthony Woodward and Lane O'Connor round up your top 20. Then we have Clyde Whiting, second in the club championship race. Then Wayne Sanderson, third in the club race, was Steve Lavelli in front of Pogatayrev, Sebula, Drivers One Lap Down, Bingham, Switzer, New Italiancic, Collinson, Andrew Hoffman, and Michael Frost. For the interviews, and we will start with our race three winner. It's Jamie McKnight. We Hello, Jamie. Sorry to rudely interrupt you for from your chat with uh, with Johnny Brandon. Uh, so. After race two, you were a bit sad, uh, you know, and then uh, race three, you come out as the winner. How, how does that feel? Oh yeah, absolutely, it was, uh, and it was, uh, I mean, all in all, a very good day for your team, of course, uh, you guys to come uh, first and second in race one as well, it looked like from qualifying, I mean, in qualifying, uh, so before race one, you guys were uh, basically all at the front of the pack, so you clearly did your homework, uh, did, did you, do you guys uh, particularly enjoy this uh, kind of uh, racetrack, because uh, you were all there at the front? So great uh, day for you guys, uh, before uh, we go, just a quick look at what's coming next after, uh, you know, going from the North Life uh, to Barber, then we go back to, I mean, in a couple of weeks time to a more traditional racetrack uh, on the 21st of April, sprint race and feature race at the Barcelona Grand Prix racetrack, which I think is going to be a first for the series, unless I'm very much mistaken. Um, at the start of season one, 2020 in December, when we went there for a lot of practice. And uh, I'm feeling pretty confident for that track too, because this car's got a very, very uh, dynamic range of setup and we're finding that's that's why we did so well this week, because we really tried the extremes of, you know, braking and suspension perch and, and dampers, and we really tuned it well. And now we're really starting to get a good handle on what we need to do. And I think 
with that knowledge and the set that I already had, I reckon I can um, really push the front there too. I'm looking forward to that and uh, it's going to be a good weekend. Well, Jamie, congratulations once again uh, for a great day for you and your team. Before we let you go, anyone you'd like to thank? Well, obviously, uh, my sister team, I call them, NQR Blue. We actually uh, we do, we share uh, with my brand new team in Australia, United Sim Sports, which uh, Jared Gilsell and I have um, kicked off. We share our data, so we're working together. That, that, that The idea is that we accelerate the development of this car with two small but good teams, do you know what I mean, with quality drivers. So I'd like to thank Tony Klusman, particularly in NQR, all the boys there for training with me, and their sponsors, obviously, Simfinity. And, and uh, I'd like to also thank uh, my team and Valvoline all. And, of course, you, Marco, my favourite commentator. <laughs> Thanks, man. Congratulations once again. Catch you in, uh, in a couple of weeks, then. Yeah, thank you, mate. And well, well done to Johnny, too, in that last race. You did brilliant. See you later, buddy. And that was Jamie McKnight, uh, race three winner. Let's get you, hopefully we don't interrupt him rudely, race one winner, Chris Jackson. Hello, Chris. Hey, Marco. How's it going? Doing fine. And uh, I'm quite sure you guy, you are particularly happy because uh, of uh, a good, uh, good, uh, you know, good, good day of racing. And of course, uh, a great victory in the first race. Yeah, race one went perfect. Team put in a lot of practice this week. We got a really good setup, had a lot of pace. Um, so really happy with race one, race two and three. I got spun a couple of times, so it was a tough track to pass people on. And that was my job in race two and three, but a lot of fun. I was talking to, um, uh, of course, to Jamie just a couple of seconds ago, but I will ask this to you um, as well because you looked like uh, you guys looked like you had fantastic uh, 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 pace in qualifying you were all at the front so seems like uh, it was uh, uh, from the beginning looking to be a good good day for you guys yeah the team put in a lot of work uh, all of us put in a ton of work uh, little tweaks here and there shared it with everyone and then uh, everyone contributed and we ended up with a set that was really suited for whatever temperature really at this track. So it was, it was a lot of fun and it was nice to get the reward of the hard work from the whole team. So thanks to NQR and the effort everyone. How has it been with new car for you and new tire model? Of course, uh, how are you, uh, are you, how are you getting used to this? Are you feeling confident uh, now more than maybe, you know, uh, the very beginning of the season? I am doing well with the new car. Um, I'm still not a huge, huge fan, but the more we work with setup, I'm starting to get it to drive the way I like it. So I'm, I'm doing quite well. The official races I'm doing all right in. Uh, the Euro League here I'm doing quite well in. So it's baby steps, I guess you could say. We're just keep tweaking it to our liking, and uh, we're obviously getting on quite well with it. Well, Chris, again, congratulations to you and your team. Before we let you go, anyone you'd like to thank? Definitely have to thank my wife for uh, letting me jump on the sim today. Uh, Simability, our team sponsor, NQR, like I said, fabulous setup work, fabulous collaboration between the team. Uh, thank all the uh, everyone in the league participating and you guys for the uh, um, the commentary. Thanks a lot, guys. Awesome, uh, Chris. Congratulations and catch you in a couple of weeks then. Sounds good. Take care. And now. Let's have a chat with uh, Johnny Brandon. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Marco. How are you? I'm doing fine now, but you looks like uh, last couple of rounds of the championship have been an improvement over the start of the season. Yeah, I finished. I finished <laughs> the races. <laughs> Definitely improvement. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I haven't watched back the races, and I think there was a bit of carnage. I thought there would be carnage tonight, and. Um, I had a really enjoyable night, so it's a great race. How was uh, the track for you? Because uh, it looked like, uh, of course, we I was expecting, uh, as per usual, uh, uh, a lot of uh, chaos. Uh, uh, short track always brings it uh, in this championship, in any championship for uh, for that matter. Uh, but uh, in in reality, uh, I think that I said in the in the broadcast. The fact that the airpin in reality was not a airpin, it was left and then straight away to the right, took away the main passing spot, so you had to work very hard to make any, any kind of overtake in this, in this event. 
Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I, I don't think there's any such thing as a bad track, really. It's just bad decisions from people. And I mean, I've got to say thank you to Marco Namella, Harold Stadler. The racing was brilliant. You know, I, I did some quite aggressive moves and put myself in dangerous places, but they left me room and I left their room and it was, it was great fun. And that's what it's all about. But there was a few turn one things, people sticking it four wide and, and people going too wide and running too deep on lap one, turn one. And, you know, they're silly things. If you ask me, people shouldn't be doing that, but it happens, I suppose. Um, but apart from that, yeah, strange track, not got a lot of experience here. Um, but it was good fun. Like I say, I've had a great night. Uh, so still uh, focused on getting uh, the more points possible from each meeting without looking at the standings, or are, are you starting to have a little bit more optimism towards uh, the championship situation? No, championship's done. I'll, I'm forgetting about championship. There's a long way to go. You never know if everyone has bad ones, but I, you know, I, I want Foggy to win it now. Um, he's, he hasn't had a great one tonight, I don't think. But I'm a long way behind, I think. So I don't. I haven't actually looked at it at all this season. I just know I, you know, taken out in the first four races, like very little points. It wasn't good. So um, yeah, maybe that's why I'm enjoying it so much now. No stress. It's just good fun. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I mean that's one way to look at it. And of course, uh, uh, I uh, really appreciate your optimism in, in the face of a uh, little bit of uh, bad luck. Uh, well, a lot of bad luck, I'd say, in the beginning of the championship. But Johnny, as per usual, a pleasure to talk with you. Before we let you go, anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, you obviously, uh, you guys that do the broadcast. Is it Samuel that's on the cameras? He doesn't get thanked a lot, so thank you. Um, no, no, it was only me today. League. Like, like I was the, out of the... you. Oh, you're uh, a superstar, Marco. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, thank you. But there and, was no uh, one else. So. Yeah, everyone. <laughs> Sorry? P -p poor poor uh, Woody, Andrew Woodhouse, uh, was supposed to join me, but uh, you know I, I, you know these things work, no? He went uh, to make uh, the payment to get uh, the car from my racing, and I racing, which very happily takes our money, and you know we very happily give to them. Uh, you know, I had an error with the transaction server, so he tried and tried and tried. Uh, hopefully, he hasn't been billed for like one thousand uh, uh, dollars whilst trying to bang the car during the break between race one and race two. So sounds like an excuse to me, it, Marco. It, I think it, he's down the pub. Uh, <laughs> he, he's been handing his money over time and time again, but it's not for a V8 <laughs> Aussie V8. <but laughs> he's uh, he's very happy down the town centre at the moment. Um, but anyway, yeah. thank you very much. Um, yeah, XVR, everyone that runs the league, XVR, all my teammates, you know, um, Sim Auto, Host 365, Virtual Racing Association, Inter Racing. Yep, everybody that helps us along. Yeah, and thank you. Awesome, Johnny. Hopefully well, you can get down the pub now and join Adam. <laughs> no, man, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, dinner is waiting for me, but I, I have to cook it, so I'm not in a rush. So that, that's, that's the beauty of it. Oh man, nothing like uh, some relaxing cooking after a broadcast, Johnny. Thank you very much, and uh, we will join you in a couple of weeks' time, hopefully. Perfect, Marco. Thanks, mate. Good night. Couple of interviews left. Let's start with uh, Marco Nurmel. Hello, Marco. Hello, hello. So, you, I was uh, focusing my camera on you in race one and telling how, uh, I, how you were, uh, you know slowly but surely growing more and more confident with the car and after 10 seconds uh, you spun and it yeah, was a that... long way back from from there because this, this track you cannot pass but uh, i mean in the end uh, i mean sixth place in the in, in in race three uh i would put this in uh, you know another one of those uh, lessons for the future yeah this was a new track for me too like uh i had to buy this track before the first race so <laughs> and it didn't have any practice so but yeah car is fun to drive and yeah i'm getting hang of it uh how did you find the racing to be of course this was your first super sprint event so as you see there was um, lots of cars uh, with not a lot of track and not a lot of time so how did you did you find it ah uh, it was fine 
uh, I didn't have any, it was good hard racing and uh, really fun. One uh, uh, more question for you. Uh... In a couple of weeks' time, we will be back to a more traditional track. We have been uh, to the North Schleife. We have been uh, in a very, 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 very sh small track like this. Uh, what about Barcelona, where we are going to add for the GP layout in a couple of weeks' time? Uh, it's probably fun, like all the tracks, except maybe them on someone. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just looking forward to all the races. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Marco. Before we let you go, anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, you guys, Racetech, RKE, Gain jumping in last second to help me with the setup. And, uh, yeah. Also, Marco, well, we'll catch you in a couple of weeks' time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, thanks. And last, but not least, uh, if it's not uh, the great R. Stadler for TechSense Fits Time Motorsports. Hello, Harald. Welcome to the boot. Hey, Marco. Hello. You're alone today. Oh, yes. Alone and uh, abandoned by Sam, who is nowhere to be found. Hopefully, no. I m managed to make it through uh, without boring the audience. Uh, but I mean, you guys put on a fantastic show for us tonight. Uh, how was the racing from your perspective? Uh, racing today was pretty nice. Uh, uh, okay, second race, uh, there was a, a contact with, which led to, an in, to a bigger incident. Uh, I haven't looked at the replay, but I think there was nothing big uh, which caused it, but the result was a bit hard anyway. But uh, race one was nice. Race three was very nice and it was uh much the results were much better than uh than what i expected i had only 50 minutes of practice beforehand <laughs> i fought my uh issues from nürburgring watch life where i couldn't drive because of some pc issues and i still fought it till yesterday so i'm happy enough that i can, could join today I mean, it, it seemed like uh, um, for different reasons, but I think this was a situation for many drivers because uh, I've been talked to other guys before you in the interview booth. Uh, not all of them uh, had considerable practice. I'm, uh, no, some of them uh, didn't practice at all. It's a quite, I mean, Barber itself, while it's a lovely track to hot lap in, it's not the best for racing, in my opinion. Again, I love to hot lap around here. It's uh, beautiful up and down, etc. So it's a, but not a very not a track that many series uh, employ official series or leagues because that. So having to race in Barber, but not not even in the in the big layout in this very obscure uh, short layout, uh, really was uh, made I think a new experience for. Uh, I mean I think in the thirty two car field uh, I don't know how many drivers have done a race a proper race. Uh, in this in this version of the track before tonight so at the very least you were more or less all uh, on the same uh, on the in the same starting position of course some people practice a bit more some uh, practice less but i mean if there was a place where you didn't practice maybe this was the place yeah that's that's correct I, the, there are not much series if any at all which race on this um uh on this layout so yeah uh and this uh, shortcut is really a little bit weird. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a I had a race in January with the uh, in the Czech Lincoln Touring Car Series where we drove that layout. So I knew what's coming up track wise, but uh, yeah, still was uh, in trouble with this car getting around fast enough in that short practice. Harald, well. Congratulations for a good day of racing uh, uh, for you. Before we let you go, anyone you'd like to thank? Yeah, of course. Uh, my team, TechSense, Fitstein Motorsport, the sponsors, uh, TechSense, Renwell, Fight CSE, and the others. And of course, you for broadcasting every race here and Racetech for sponsoring the series. Thank you. 
well awesome we will catch you in a couple weeks time enjoy the rest of your day Harold see you bye bye and so that was Ara Stalder and that was it for us of course just in time because I think one minute ago the Sigbring 2 hour broadcast started with some Kumo behind the cameras and in the commentary box I think the first ever time that Adam Hedgecock and Austin Knight will work together and that's going to be fun uh, and, you know uh, if, or, or maybe or maybe we did something together with the IndyCars. Uh, you know, I, I might be wrong on that. But certainly go up there and enjoy it because it will be the first time for you guys to see a broadcast with these cars. GT cars on uh, the new tire model is going to be a race you want to follow for sure. And maybe race in. Well, that's a bit late, but you know, okay. At least getting an idea of what can you can expect uh, from the 12-hour race. Uh, but of course next week the uh, the series all the major series will either restart or continue so i kindly invite you to follow our channel apex racing tv here and also you can follow uh, the iRacing esports network where we had we have several broadcasts and uh, uh, subscribe and check what's uh, what is coming up it has been a pleasure to bring these races to you Hopefully you enjoyed the show, but from everyone here at Apex Racing TV, I wish you, as per usual, good night and happy racing. <laughs>